Good evening, everyone. I will call to order the July 13, 2023 Clackamas County Board of Commissioners business meeting. Gary Schmidt, Administrator, would you please call the roll? Yes, Chair Smith. First, our staff support at this meeting, County Council Stephen Madcor, Clerk to the Board Tony Marinick. Roll call, Commissioner Savas. Present. Commissioner Schrader. Here. Commissioner West. Present. Commissioner Schull. Here. Chair Smith. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Good evening, everyone. We are holding this meeting in person and virtually. If you've joined us via Zoom for this meeting and are interested in providing public comment, we will prompt you regarding how to do that when the time is right. General public comment will be taken at the usual allotted time. I would like to remind all participants, including staff, all elected officials and members of the public that Robert's Rules of Order will be enforced in this business meeting. We welcome your opinions and look forward to your polite participation. Gary Schmidt, would you introduce the first item, please? Yes, Chair Smith. First item tonight is consent agenda. Tony, would you please read the consent agenda? Elected officials, item one, approval of previous business meeting minutes for the Board of County Commissioners. Transportation and Development, item one, approval to apply for a grant with the United States Department of Transportation for a supplemental planning grant for the Transportation Safety Action Plan. Grant value is $330,000. The matching funding through road funds of $83,905. No county general funds are involved. Item two. Approval of a funding agreement with the Willamette Falls Locks Authority. Agreement value is $120,000 for three years. Funding is through county lottery dollars. No county general funds are involved. Three, approval of a contract with Sierra Santa Fe Corporation for the Wilsonville Chip Seal Package. Contract value $342,442. Funding through county House Bill 2017 road funds. No county general funds are involved. Item four. Approval of a contract with Bricks Paving Northwest Incorporated for the Pilkington Road Paving Project. Contract value is $399,714. Funding through County House Bill 2017 road funds. No county general funds are involved. Item five, approval of a contract with K&L Industries for the West Clackamas Paving Project. Total value of the project, $997,011. Funding through County House Bill 2017 road funds. No county general funds are involved. Item six, approval of a board order authorizing purchase of SHI OpenGov's Cartograph Operations Management Software through a cooperative agreement. Total value of $392,859.87 for three years. Funding through County Road Fund. No county general funds are involved. Item seven, approval of a timber sale contract with Stella Jones Corporation for the sale of approximately 1.748 million board feet of timber as part of the wild trout timber sale. Total revenue is $1,165,114.08 over two years. Funding through Stella Jones Corporation. No county general funds are involved. Item eight, approval of a contract with Sierra Santa Fe for the Estacada Eagle Creek chip seal package. Total contract value $1,112,442. Funding through County House Bill 2017 road fund. No county general funds are involved. Health, Housing, Human Services, item one, approval of amendment number two, adding funding to a service contract with the Father's Heart Street Ministry for Extreme Weather Act Center activities and to provide additional bed nights. Amendment value is $60,389. Agreement value is increased to $311,949 for one year. Funding through State of Oregon out of the cold funds and $9,464 in budgeted county general funds. Item two, approval of amendment four, decreasing funding of a subrecipient intergovernmental grant agreement with the Oregon Department of Human Services for Older Americans Act and Oregon Project Independence Programs. Agreement value is reduced by $400,000. Agreement value is now $10,364,143 for two years. Funding through the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in the state of Oregon. No county general funds are involved. Item three, Approval of Amendment 1, increasing funding, extending the duration and updating program language to a revenue intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Department of Human Services for the Job Opportunity and Basic Skills Program. Amendment value is $1,449,243.48 for two years. Agreement value is now increased to $2,599,794.23 for four years. Funding is through the Oregon Department of Human Services. No county general funds are involved. Item 4. 
Approval of Amendment Number 1, extending the duration and increasing funding of an intergovernmental agreement with South Metro Area Regional Transit for on-demand transportation services to Villa Wall Community Housing. Amendment value is $80,000 for 12 months. Agreement value is increased to $222,140 for three years. Funding through the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Item 5, approval of a revenue intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Department of Transportation for operations capital funding for Mount Hood Express Services. Agreement value is $366,592 for four years. Funding through the Oregon Department of Transportation. No county general funds are involved. Item 6, approval of a revenue intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Department of Transportation to fund the operations, maintenance, and planning for the Mount Hood Express. Agreement value is $1,182,240 for two years. Funding through the Oregon Department of Transportation. No county general funds are involved. Item 7, approval of amendment number 3, extending the duration, increasing funding, and updating program language of an administrative services contract with Trillium Community Health Plan Incorporated for behavioral health services. Amendment value is $428,000 for 12 months. Agreement value has increased to $1,372,000 for four years. Funding is through the Oregon Health Plan. No county general funds are involved. Item 8. Approval of a contract with Alpha Energy Savers Incorporated providing weatherization services for eligible households. Call total contract value is... $1,050,000 for two years, funding through Oregon Housing and Community Service Grant Funds. No county general funds are involved. Item 9, approval of a contract with Electec Lighting and Electric Incorporated for providing weatherization services for eligible households. Total contract value, $1,050,000 for two years, funding through Oregon Housing and Community Services Grant Funds. No county general funds are involved. Item 10, approval of a contract with Energy Comfort and Construction LLC for providing weatherization services for eligible households. Total contract value, $1,050,000 for two years. Funding through Oregon Housing and Community Services grant funds. No county general funds are involved. Item 11, approval of a contract with Four Seasons Heating and Air Conditioning for four providing weatherization services for eligible households. Total contract value, $1,050,000 for two years. Funding through Oregon Housing and Community Services grant funds. No county general funds are involved. Item 12, Approval of a contract with Good Energy Retrofit for weatherization services for eligible households. Total contract, va contract value, $1,050,000 for two years. Funding through Oregon Housing and Community Services Grant Fund. No county general funds are involved. Item 13, approval of a contract with Rickert Family Incorporated for weatherization services for eligible households. Total contract value, $1,050,000 for two years. Funding through Oregon Housing and Community Services Grant Fund. No county general funds are involved. Item 14, approval of a contract with Sky Ill Insulation, LLC, for weatherization services for eligible households. Total contract value, $1,050,000 for two years. Funding through Oregon Housing and Community Service Grant Funds. No county general funds are involved. Item 15, approval of a contract with WireNet Enterprises, LLC, for weatherization services for eligible households. Total contract value, $1,050,000 for two years. Funding through Oregon Housing and Community Services Grant Funds. No county general funds are involved. Item 16, approval of Amendment 3, expanding the scope of work and increasing the funding of a personal services contract with Northwest Family Services for Adult and Youth Housing Services. Amendment value is $2,427,616 for one year. Agreement value is increased to $7,778,129 for three years. Funding through Metro Supportive Housing Services Measure Funds. No county general funds are involved. Item 17, approval of Amendment 2, expanding the scope, increasing funding, and extending the duration of a personal services contract with Northwest Family Services for operation of Casa Esperanza as housing, navigation, and shelter. Amendment value is $872,581 for one year. Agreement value is increased to $1,309,668 for two years. Funding through Metro Supportive Housing Services Measure Fund and $117,225 in budgeted county general funds. Madam Chair, that concludes the list. Thank you, Tony. That was done very well. Does any commissioner wish to remove anything off the consent agenda? I'll entertain a motion. Chair, I move that we approve the consent agenda as read. Seconded. Commissioner West has moved we approve the consent agenda. Commissioner Scholl has seconded that. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, please call the poll. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Scholl. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Chair Smith. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thanks very much. I went through that part of the business meeting fast. That's got to be a record. Less than 15 minutes. Up next is public communication.
This portion of the agenda shall be limited to items of county business which are properly the object of board consideration and should be nonpartisan in nature as the BCC is a nonpartisan governing body under Oregon Revised Statutes and County Code. Testimony is limited to three minutes and comments shall be respectful and courteous to all. As a reminder, you can email submissions for public communication at bcc at clackamas.us, and these will be accepted as part of the public record. I will now open the meeting for public testimony, and I will take in-person testimony first. We have a batch of cards, and the clerk has divided them up for us according to topic. So that's how we're going to proceed tonight. Thank you very much. Up first is, um, I believe it's Eileen Burns. Is Am I pronouncing that right? Mm, there's E-I-L-L-E-N. Ellen. Ellen, okay. Ellen, please come forward, ma'am. Thank you very much. State your name, your area of residence, and you have three minutes. Good evening, Chair Smith and Commissioner Savas Schrader, West and Shoal. My name is Ellen Burns, and I live in Gladstone. I'm a privileged white woman. Consequently, diversity, inclusion, and especially equity are important values to me. To whom much is given, much is required. I'm here to support funding for the Clackamas County Equity and Inclusion Office. I am three generations away from immigrants from Ireland and Germany on my mother's side, and one generation away on my father's side from being a grit, a derogatory term for urban Appalachians. There are no longer Irish need not apply signs in store windows, but there are both unspoken and overt prejudices playing out in this country and in this county, especially concerning people of color and the LGBT plus community. The Equity and Inclusion Office aligns with the values of Clackamas businesses, cities, and residents to create a welcoming, inclusive, and thriving community. Furthering, not eliminating the work of this office can counter negative stereotypes and promote unity. Clackamas County's performance Clackamas lists measurable goals encompassed by five strategic priorities. Build public trust through good government, grow a vibrant economy, ensure safe, healthy, and secure communities, build a strong infrastructure, honor, utilize, promote, and invest in our natural resources. The first three priorities are all dependent on an inclusive, diverse, and equitable community. An argument can be made that a strong infrastructure and healthy natural resources are also dependent on those values. Pairing the Clackamas County Equity Inclusion of and Inclusion Office with partnerships and collaborations with community organizations is aligned with meeting the diverse needs of our community. There is much work still to be done. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. I'm going, at this time, I'm going to have Administrator Gary Schmidt explain maybe the confusion of, uh, uh, revolved around this issue. Would you please? Uh, yes, Chair. So the board approved the budget for Clackamas County, which includes the Office of Equity and Inclusion. It is funded. The funding was not cut. The funding is this current fiscal year that started July 1st is going to be funding this office through cost allocations which is primarily all funds that come to Clackamas County. There's a small portion that indeed, yes, will be general funds, which is property taxes, but that's a small portion of that funding. The majority of the funding comes from the other funding sources Clackamas County receives. Your budget is $1.2 billion, as you know. Uh, so that office is funded. The conversation the board's gonna have on August 1st is to talk about more about the, the work of that office, kind of the values of what you would like to see that office do as part of our county core values, that's kind of the next conversation, not really a funding conversation. The office still exists. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Up next, and Nancy Slavin. Please state your name, your area of residence, and you have three minutes. Hello, commissioners. My name is Nancy Slavin. I live in Oregon City. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you again. I wrote a letter and sent it to you on June 1st. I spoke virtually at the June 29th meeting and I'm here to speak to you again in person to urge you to actually hear what the 780 plus people who signed on to the letter 
um, for the community urging you, we understand that it's funded, but to keep the work of the Equity and Inclusion Office as it is with its current budget, uh, the amazing staff, and the important representation for Clackamas County to help guide us in co-creating a welcoming, inclusive, and safe community. I understand that we do not perhaps agree on what the purpose of the Equity Office is as it currently stands, um, but I do agree with Commissioner Shell's point in a recent article where he is quoted as saying, the woke ideology is about gaining political power and equity is a tool for them to gain that power. That's correct, Mr. Shaw. We are trying to gain political power so that we can have equity. Those of us who are asking for equity doesn't mean we're trying to take away your power. You have power and you've used it. Um, you've shown us that you've given more money than ever this year to the sheriff's office, for example. And I can't speak for everyone who is woke, of course. I actually am pretty tired. I'm a mom. I'm getting older. I don't feel very woke most of the time. But as a former teacher who worked with kids at risk for 20 years in a county very similar to this, I'm just asking that you talk to those of us who you may have disagreement with um, and you make an effort to understand what we're saying when we say we need equity before we can have equality. We do not have equity in Clackamas County as people from minoritized groups, as Ellen just said, are being exponentially harmed by the everyday experiences of inflation, inflation harassment, hate crimes, drought, climate change, all those things are disproportionately affecting groups who have not typically had political power. So again, also I want to mention, you know, the Coalition of Communities of Color has been hired by Clackamas County and is currently investigating and preparing a report on the equity inclusion work here. So removing or watering down or changing the charter is not going to be great optics. It's going to be detrimental to the economy and potentially a legal problem. So. Equity work is not about who's liberal, conservative. It's about equal pay, childcare, public education, and it's about liberation from brutality and harm so that we can all have the authentic opportunity to be equal and free. Thank you very much. Thank you. Up next, Chris Waller. Please stand, come forward, state your name, your area of residence, and you have three minutes. Chris Waller, Jennings Lodge. You're going to hear about this quote quite often tonight. In an interview with a right-wing news source, Commissioner Schull stated, the woke ideology is about gaining political power, and equity is a tool for them to gain that power. The words equity, inclusion, and diversity are friendly words that naive people are attracted to, but for the woke, the words really mean one thing, applying unequal standards to ensure preferential outcomes for individuals and groups based on race, color of skin, sex, or gender identity. <clears throat> this shows that Commissioner Schull has no idea what the county's Equity and Inclusion Office actually does. The evidence is clear. The work of DEIA offices benefits job performance. According to executive strategist Gartner, gender diverse and inclusive teams outperform gender homogenous, less inclusive teams by 50% on average. According to the Harvard Business Review, employees who feel like they belong experience a 56% increase in job performance, a 50% drop in turnover risk, and a 75% reduction in sick days. This same study found that DEIA tools like finding empowerment were so powerful that employees who experienced them outperformed their peers. In their research report, Delivering Through Diversity, McKinsey and Company, a performance <coughs> management research firm, found that gender, ethnic, and cultural diversity, particularly within executive teams, was directly correlated with performance and hypothesized that more diverse companies are better able to attract top talent and to improve their customer and employee satisfaction. They found that strong DEIA offices were crucial to this success. The evidence is clear. DEIA services strengthen a workplace. Employees who feel like they belong and like they are treated fairly perform better. 
Look beyond the right-wing shibboleths and stalking horses and do what is right for this county. Thank you. Uh, before I call on the next person, there are some people who just entered. If anybody would like to testify, please come forward, put, uh, fill out a blue card and put it in the basket and you'll be called on. Up next is Diane Cassidy. Please come forward, state your name, your area of residence, and you have three minutes. My name is Diane Cassidy. I live in Lake Oswego. Um, I am speaking about the Office of um, Equity and Inclusion. I received an email from my mayor, Lake Oswego Mayor uh, Joe Buck, along with a link to sign a letter uh, to the Clackamas County Board of Commissioners that ad advocated not only for protecting the Office for Equity and Inclusion, but expanding it. The list of signers is long, and the number of organizations they hoped would add weight to their cause is also long. Many of these people are paid to lobby the government for their causes, and they share their numbers with other groups in order to appear more influential than they really are. In these political social justice fights, normal citizens are at a disadvantage. Most regular people don't have the time to get this involved with budget fights, or excuse me, the budget process. They work, take care of families, and have lives to lead. But the activists never rest. It's like facing a buzzsaw if you think differently than the activists. I've seen this tactic before and I'm not impressed by the show of interest for what appears to be a noble cause and neither should you be. The pile on of organizations and politicians and their followers follow Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals handbook. Always remember the first rule of power tactics. Power is not only what you have but what the enemy thinks you have. The objective is to get the power players to think that the public sentiment for their cause is larger than it is. They wish to intimidate you, me, and everyone who reads their letter that their agenda is the right course of action, and in this case, to do anything less would be uncaring and racist. I don't think the Office of Equity and Inclusion has proven itself to be useful to the county. I have seen their website and read their research and progress reports and still not clear about what the purpose of the office is. Many of the, albeit fuzzy, goals around employment are things that can be handled by the HR department. Other recommendations listed in the Coalition of Communities of Color evaluation for Clackamas County are either illegal, like hiring and promoting based on race, or giving out incentives and contracts to minority companies, or are being taken care of by other departments within the county, housing, transportation, food, broadband, etc. For any department in a business or government agency, I would like to see the following to find the problem. I don't get that with this office. What is the problem? List the objective measurable goals. I don't see that either. What is it that they, this office is supposed to be doing that I can see that is going to be measurable and objective so that as a taxpayer, I know I'm getting my money's worth because it just seems a lot too fuzzy when you say support and um, encourage. Thank you very much, work. Diane. Thank you. And you can submit the rest of your testimony email. Okay. And Thank if you. you didn't get a chance, to see, anybody can do that if you All can't right. get it in the three minutes. All right. Up next is Patrick Classen. I hope I said that right. Or is it Clayson? Please come forward, state your name, your area of residence, and you have three minutes. My name is Patrick Clayson. I'm president. Ask me Water Environment Services 350-4. I live in Oregon City. Esteemed members of the board, thank you for granting me this opportunity to address you today. I stand before you to advocate for a fair and just resolution to the issue at hand, the need to increase our COLA to match the CPI. First and foremost, I want to emphasize that the well-being of our community in Clackamas County is deeply intertwined with the well-being of the dedicated workforce at West. These individuals work tirelessly to ensure the cleanliness and safety of our waterways, protecting the health of the residents and the environment in which they live and recreate. It is our collective responsibility to recognize and address the challenges they face. Our employees are confronted with the harsh reality of rising costs in fuel, rent, food, and various other essential expenses. The increased cost of these day-to-day -day necessities 
are placing an immense strain on the workers' ability to meet their basic needs and provide for their families. As public servants, they deserve wage adjustments that keep pace with the ever-increasing cost of living. Moreover, it is crucial to acknowledge that many of our neighboring municipalities are currently paying higher salaries and providing appropriate COLAs. This puts us at a distinct disadvantage when it comes to attracting and retaining a skilled and dedicated workforce. <clears throat> In order to maintain a competitive edge and continue delivering top quality services to our community, you must take action. While we understand the county is currently facing budget challenges due to construction costs, we must not overlook the importance of investing in our workforce while acknowledging that Wes has zero direct impact on the general fund. Your employees should not have to worry about making ends meet tomorrow or having to seek alternative employment to meet their financial obligations due to an erosion of spending power created by a lack of keeping pace with inflation. Our employees are not merely, members on a, are not merely numbers on a spreadsheet or line item in a budget. They are the heart and soul of this county. They are the ones who work diligently to maintain the integrity of our infrastructure, ensuring that our residents have access to clean and safe waterways. Without their tireless efforts, the health and well-being of our citizens would be compromised. Affording West employees an adequate COLA is crucial to maintaining the high standards of service our county's residents deserve. Our employees possess invaluable knowledge and expertise. Failing to address the legitimate needs and adequately adjusting their COLA, you risk losing their institutional knowledge jeopardizing your ability to provide efficient and effective services. Losing our talented employees to neighboring municipalities due to an inadequate COLA would be detrimental to our community's health and safety. Their commitment to their roles is admirable. We ask that you reciprocate by providing them with the necessary support and wage adjustments required to maintain a livelihood at a standard equal to that in which they can provide the items essential for living and raising a family in the community that they serve. In conclusion, I implore each member of this esteemed board to stand with us in advocating for an appropriate COLA for West. Employees thereby Thank protecting the health much. and safety of the county's Thank waterways you, and the constituents of your county. can get your testimony in three minutes please submit it by email and please observe the three minute timeline we have a lot of people in the room and online who would like to testify up next Ezra Flattery Flannerty Flannerty I believe sorry about that please state your name your area of residence and you have three minutes um, my name is Ezra Flaherty, I use he, him pronouns, and I live in Oregon City. Um, I'm 25 years old, and I've worked for the county for just under four years. Within that time, I've personally responded to a massive wildfire, a major ice event, other snow events, and that's in addition to the day-to-day -day and after-hour events that I respond to to keep Clackamas County roads safe and open. Within that time, I have also watched the price of what I need to live increase dramatically, the, incur the current increase being 8.5%. Yet what the board seems to think is a decent compensation is barely half that. I come home from work every day to a house that is only as secure as my landlord's whims. Someone who is a near stranger gets to decide whether or not the place I live fits what I desire to do with my life. It has always been a dream of mine to own a home. I started saving when I was a teenager but that goal, that hope, slips further and further away as the gap between what I can afford and what life costs grows wider. Every month, I send nearly half of my paycheck to a person who can tell me to pack my life up and I'll have nothing to show for it. Working for the county should be a job that provides a stable future for me and my coworkers, but instead is increasingly driving us into economic hardship. Thank you. Thank you. Chris uh, Deser Deserati, I'm not sure, I can't read your writing. Uh, state your name, your area of residence, and you have three minutes. Good evening, Commissioner. Sorry, I'm Chris Desiderati. I live in Milwaukee, Oregon. Good evening, Commissioners, and thank you for this time to speak tonight. Uh, my name is Chris Desiderati, and I've been working for Wes for over eight years. 
I support Wes's important mission by monitoring our streams and creeks in the field, providing outreach and pollution prevention resources to local businesses that use Wes's services for moving sewage, and plan and coordinate a team of three other brothers and sisters not here tonight to do just that work. I work on the front lines to help Wes work. Tonight we're here to make a case for being able to afford to live and work in Clackamas County. In negotiations, our leadership is asking to keep our cost of living adjustment, or also known as COLAs, up to the local consumer price index. Adjustments that track with the, co the COLA um, allow my wife and my new nine-month-old son to pay for groceries, gas, and other local goods we enjoy in this place we call home. My ask is simple, please direct your negotiating team to watch our, to match our requested COLA to the consumer price index so my family can continue to live and pay for goods and services in this area we love. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, Adam Cardwell. Adam Cardwell, are you in the room? Please state your name, your area of residence, and you have three minutes. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Adam Cardwell. I live right here in Oregon City. Um, I'm a wastewater mechanic for West Water Environment Services. I work down here at the Tri-Cities plant. Um, this year, it'll be 11 years for me working at, at West. Um, in the time uh, that I've worked there, I've had four kids. I will forever be grateful for Clackamas County and West for the job that I have. Um, it's treated my family well. Um, and obviously, we're here to talk about the COLA today um, and, and to uh, talk over negotiations to match the COLA that's come in at over uh, 8%. Now, while the 4.5% that we've got is nice, um, it's nowhere near what we need to be at. Um, over the last few years and ever since I've had kids, you know, I could go to the gas station right here in Oregon City where I live and I can buy a, a gallon of gas for a little over $2 a gallon. You know, here in the last two or three years, I can, you know, I, I'm lucky if I can find one that's below, you know, $5 a gallon. You know, my wife goes to grocery shopping right here, Albertson's, Safeway across the road, and $100 would, would last our family all week long. You know, now I can't get out of there for $250, $300 to last our family a whole week, you know. Um, the, the coal is just not where it needs to be. Um, when I, was, when I was growing up, my father always told me that I, pl I played a lot of sports, baseball, soccer, I wrestled. My father always drilled into my head that, you know, I can talk about how good I am at sports or how much of a hard worker I am. You know, I grew up on a farm. You know, I can tell people all day long. I could sit here and tell you how, you know, I'm a hard worker down at the plant, you know, or I'm good at sports or something. But talking is just talking. You know, it means nothing until you back it up, until you can prove to somebody else that your actions speak louder than words. And one thing that I've found in the 11 years that I've been an employee at Wes is, is the one thing that is so disheartening is that we get told all the time how much of an asset that we are to Clackamas County by management, by supervisors, board members, everybody. <clears throat> We are the one main asset of Clackamas County, that we keep the ball rolling, that we work on the front lines, as, as others have said. But when it comes time to prove, you know, what a good asset we are, we have to fight tooth and nail for those percentages that we get. And I think a lot of times those percentages would be taken away from us if we didn't fight tooth and nail for them. So I would please ask that when the time comes, take action. Don't just talk. Take action and, and, and meet, you know, where the cola is and where it's coming in at. Thank you. Up next, Paul Edgar. Paul Edgar, please come forward, state your name, your every uh, residence, and you have three minutes. Thank you, Chair and, and County Commissioners. I'm Paul Edgar from Oregon City. I wanted to, this is a change of pace a little bit. Uh, tolling 
is in front of us and it potentially can kill us. It could devastate this county's economy. It could eliminate jobs. It is just a virus that some people want to unleash on us. But what I, you know, I'm highly involved. I would all like everybody to understand IP4 is a vote before tolls initiative too. Not a paid political announcement there. But, but one of the things we need to do is have a louder voice. And I'm asking all of you to really stand up join with all of the cities and all of the city commissioners or councilors, everyone. We need to be screaming. We need to be let everyone know that this tolling could take thousands of dollars out of everyone's pockets. So all of these employees back here are worried about having money in their pocket <coughs> to pay their bills. Tolling could represent two, three thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. in money going out. It's just ridiculous what the impact will be. Diversion, like going across the the bridge, uh, the old Arch Bridge into Oregon City, will clog 99, stop 43, Stafford Road, Borland Road. People will not be able to go from to Canby or into uh, uh, north, it will scatter people onto side roads that are not built for this traffic and it will kill people. People will die because we didn't raise our voice and say, not no, it's almost like it. we gotta get to a point where we, we maybe it's hell no. We can't allow this to happen. And we have people out there, the, the legislature, passed uh, funding for ODOT with 21 new full-time positions to implement tolling. They have $300 million invested right now, funded to make tolling happen. So when the governor says it's on a pause, that is BS, okay? They want this to happen and if you guys, and gals and everybody, if we don't stand up and yell and, and, and we gotta, you gotta take the governor on one-on-one. -on -one. You gotta, you gotta Thank take you on much. all of these people one-on-one. On one. Let's make it happen. Thank you. You bet. Is there anyone else in the room who would like to testify that has not turned in a blue card or would like to turn in a blue card? Uh, seeing none, Tony? Did you turn in a card? Don't have it. Come on forward. What's your name? Don't have it. Go ahead, please state your name, your area of residence, and you have three minutes. My name is Otis Lundgren. I live in Clackamas County, and I'm vice president of ASME 350-4 Water Environment Services. And I'm here today to talk about the cost of living adjustment. Our current contract has a third year reopener for negotiations on cost of living adjustment if the consumer price index for urban wage earners and clerical workers, also known as CPIW, came in at an in increase above 4.5% for 2022. The CPIW came in at an increase of 8.4% for 2022. We have had three bargaining sessions with the county to date, and they have not been willing to move any higher than 4.5%. A full cost of living adjustment is necessary to keep our members' wages on pace with inflation. A member has given me permission to share his current situation and how a cost of living adjustment of only 4.5% would impact him. This person works for Water Environment Services 40 hours a week and works overtime when presented with the opportunity. To make ends meet, he also works 25 hours a week at a second job. He has shown me his wages at both jobs and I crunched some numbers to make up the deficit in his wages of 3.9% between the CPIW of 8.4 and the county's offer of 4.5%. 
he would have to work an extra 13 and a half eight hour shifts a year at his second job. Effectively 14 more mornings out of the year that he'd wake up, lace him up, head to work instead of staying home and raising his nine month old daughter. A cost of living adjustment is not a raise, it's not a bonus, it's not because your boss really likes you. It is simply an adjustment to keep the spending power of our members dollar on pace with inflation. A cost of living adjustment of 8.4% will not lighten the financial burden on our members, but a cost of living adjustment of 4.5% will make it heavier. Thank you. Up next, Aubrey Patterson. Please state your name, your area of residence, and you have three minutes. Now, is the little one going to testify for you? Absolutely. Because I heard him in the back. <laughs> he will absolutely testify as well. All right. I'm Aubrey Patterson. I live in unincorporated Clackamas County in between Gladstone and Milwaukee. Uh, and I'm a public educator. Yay, COLA, yay, unions. But really, I'm here to testify on behalf of the Office of Equity and Inclusion. I was just outside with my slightly loud baby, and I noticed your beautiful sign recognizing the ability of all to use the gender bathroom that affirms their own identity. Amen. Like this is a tiny step that we are taking forward. Like look around the room. We need to be making these small steps toward having some presence of equity and inclusion in Clackamas County. Oh. Yay, let's do this. Please continue to fund it. It has a purpose and it, the, as to the other woman's remarks, it will continue to be clarified as we elect more and more people who believe in the power of equity and inclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Tony, who's online? Madam Chair, I will begin with Gabriel Blau. Gabriel, please state your name and area of residence. You will have three minutes. Uh, yes, my name is Gabrielle Blau. I uh, work and live in uh, Gladstone, and I'm here to talk to you today about the Department of Equity, uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Um, I realize that it is funded, which is a good start. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit in support of that department. Um, particularly, um, that department seems to be in support of uh, Resolution 2115-96, uh, which is the resolution um, stating the values of those boards uh, for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, as it turns out, I did a little research on uh, what um, has been happening in our county as far as um, diversity. And it seems like uh, there has been um, an increase in the diversity of our county. <clears throat> and as such, those people need to be supported. Um, I have also looked at the um, percentage of hate crimes that we have here in Clackamas County. And according to the Oregon Department of Justice, uh, increased hate crimes since 2020 have been up over uh, 300%. Um, there's been, uh, since January of 2020 to June of 2021, 289 bias reports and 13 charges. Um, it is very important that um, the county continue to support diversity and equity and inclusion so that everybody here um, in Clackamas County feels uh, warm, welcome, and part of our community. And this is a very important job that this department does. Um, I hope that you will continue to support them and thank you for your time. Thank you. Up next, Tony. Next on my list, Cassie Wilson. Please state your name and area of residence. You will have three minutes. Good evening, Chair Smith and Commissioners. My name is Cassie Wilson and I'm a resident of Boring. I'm here to ask for your support for the work of the Equity and Inclusion Office. I served as a member of the Leaders for Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Council for most of last year. I've worked with our county's Equity and Inclusion Office through my time on LEDIC as well as other advisory committees. As a young disabled resident of Clackamas County, I've seen and been positively impacted by the work this office does. The Equity and Inclusion Office did critical work during the pandemic to strive for more equitable health outcomes. 
They've ensured translation is provided for critical communications, such as during the ballot debacle caused by our former clerk. They've worked to make our county a more welcoming and inclusive place both to live and to work as their office serves not just residents, but employees and elected officials too. To me, one of the most important aspects of their work is the relationship building they do with the community because you can't have equitable community engagement without first building trust. The Equity and Inclusion Office does essential work and is critical to ensuring a welcoming, safe, and thriving community. Equity is necessary and different from equality. Ideally, I'd like to see the county striving for justice, but for some reason you seem to think people with very different needs can have them met with identical solutions when that's just not true. You represent the entire community. By supporting the work of the Office of Equity and Inclusion, the county will be working to address systemic inequities, historical injustices, and ongoing discrimination. Over the past year, I've seen many talented staff members I've worked with leave their jobs at the county. As a community member and a student who hopes to work in public service in Clackamas County, it's important to me that the commission make strides towards retaining the amazing people who work here, and that means prioritizing equity and inclusion, both externally and internally. Please work to build trust with the community and protect, support, and uplift the Equity and Inclusion Office. Also, I just wanted to say solidarity to the workers who testified tonight, and I urge the commission to meet their needs with a sufficient COLA. Thank you. Up next, Tony, up next. Next on my list, Jeanette DeCastro. Please state your name. You have three minutes. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jeanette DeCastro. I live in unincorporated Clackamas County in the Sunnyside Mount Scott CPO. Um, I'm speaking tonight uh, for the Equity and Inclusion Office. Um, I'll make a, an addition to my comment. I'm concerned about the phrasing from my neighbor in Lake Oswego, who talked about an enemy aspect to the community letter um, supporting the Equity and Inclusion Office. I found that a little shocking and I want to let my neighbor know and the commissioners know that I don't see my neighbors as enemies, even if we disagree. Um, the equity and inclusion office is like any county department. Um, you know, folks who live here can give feedback. Um, as a different example, a few months back, I gave some feedback to the facilities department. Um, there were some things I noticed at the Gladstone library um, the walkways were narrower than four feet. Um, there were some things in the way, including like an old, uh, one of those things you use to put out cigarettes outside. And I thought the access could be improved for people with wheelchairs. Um, so I made the suggestion that they look at that. I understand the Gladstone Library is going to be replaced. It's temporary, et cetera. Um, but I think, you know, there are ways that the county can do better. Um, and. I don't think the county wants to wait for somebody like me or someone else to just notice. I think if there's that opportunity for our equity and inclusion office to teach and educate and provide support to county departments to notice these things and provide better access to folks in the community to the services that the county provides, I think that's a great thing. Um, and I would like to see um, in the policy discussions really a lot of thought and consideration given to, to the way that that, um, that contribution is important and, and valuable. Um, I will wrap it up there. I, I thank you all very much for your time and your attention this evening. Thank you. Tony, who's next? Next on my list, Lorianne Gouillet. Please state your name and area of residence. Hi, my name is Lorena Gayet. Uh, I live in Damascus, or also considered unincorporated uh, Clackamas County. I speak regarding the Office of Equity and Inclusion. Uh, specifically, I think that this is office is one of our most vital offices in the county. Uh, as a queer Latina who lives where I live, um, I really do find it ex <laughs> increasingly important. Specifically, I feel that uh, when my concerns can and are heard. 
at every intersection of my existence, not just being a brown person who lives here, but being a queer brown person, someone who loves another woman. Um, I feel safe because of that. Um, I think it's important that we see the Office of Equity and Inclusion not as something that divides, but rather unifies people through education and inclusion. And I find that people who see it otherwise tend to be those who benefit from fear and division. The Equity and Inclusion Office is important for, county for the county's accountability and allows us to provide for the needs of queer people, trans people, disabled people, uh, all people of color, as well as those of us who grew up in extreme poverty and other very high risk situ situations, such as being in foster care, like uh, my, some of my family was. Um, it's not lost on me that the person who originally proposed cutting funding is the one who has expressed some of the most ignorant statements, and maybe if he spoke with the employees in this office, he might see the benefits of equity instead of seeing it as something to fear. I strongly encourage you all to see the work that this office is already doing and ask that you encourage their, their existing work further. Um, also, as a side note, I, to support these union workers asking for a living wage. Thank you. Tony? That is the end of my registered list. If you would like to testify, please use the raise hand feature and I will call on you in the order received. Madam Chair, I do not have any hands raised. Thank you very much. I will now close the public communication portion of this meeting and we will move on. Gary, what's next? Next is County Administrator Update, that's me. I like to use my time to share outstanding stories about the amazing employees of Clackamas County. Tonight, I'd like to share about our supportive housing services team located in the Health, Housing, and Human Services Department. They recently helped Ray, an 87-year-old homeless Korean War veteran living in the Milwaukee area. It was revealed, relayed to our staff that Ray's case manager from an agency at another county had effectively given up on Ray because Ray did not want to relocate to the Gresham area for his housing. Our supportive housing services team found out, prioritized Ray's case, and quickly worked with the nonprofit Love One and the American Legion Post 180 in Milwaukee to make things happen for Ray. Ray has now received his regional long-term rental assistance voucher from Clackamas County, and he will move into an apartment in Milwaukee very soon. I want to thank the incredible staff in Health, Housing, Human Services, particularly our supportive housing services team. That's what they're here to do, and they did it. Just one example. So thank you to our staff uh, for their great work. That's my report tonight, Chair. Thank you, Gary. We will now move on to Commissioner Communication. Uh, first is Commissioner Scholl. Yes, thank you, Chair Smith, and good evening, Clackamas County. Uh, I'd like to thank all the members have asked me for being here tonight. The board continually tries to balance the needs of our employees with the balancing of our budget and also in view of the needs and capabilities of the taxpayer and the ratepayer. So I'm sure that we can come to a mutual accepted agreement in the future. We can't talk about contract negotiations tonight, but we look forward to further, further discussion. Uh, regarding EID, as you know, in August we will have a, another opportunity to discuss EID and how it's going to work in Clackamas County and the road ahead on that. On a couple of fun things, I'd like to remind everybody that on 9 August, you need to be out in Boring at 445 for the Boring and Dull Days Parade and the social out there. Also, uh, especially for you folks with young kids who love a good fair, August 15th starts the Clackamas County Fair in Canby, so please get that on your schedule. Another thing, too, that i like to make sure everybody's aware of is on fire prevention. Uh, if you haven't viewed the Clackamas County Wildfire Protection Plan on the website, please do that. Also, there's a link there for how you can keep your home uh, safe from wildfires, and also uh, a link there to get locked on to the public alerts system so you can be notified on your phone in the case of a disaster in your area. On hot weather, you know, we got a hot weekend coming up. Our cooling centers open 
with any temperature over 95 degrees. We could get to there this weekend. And for those of you who know somebody who might be in need of a cooling center, the number to call is nine, excuse me, 211, and they'll give you a list of uh, the cooling center closest to you. On K through 12, although K through 12 is not a purview of the Board of Commissioners, it's always a concern of mine. Um, the, the Smarter Balance Assessment for K through 12 schools in Oregon was completed. We're still not doing too well uh, in view of the greater amount of money that's been put into K through 12. So parents this summer, please uh, make sure you're getting involved with your school board and let's see what we can do about that. Um, and then this tomorrow, I'm gonna be over in Washington County for a council of forest trust lands. We're gonna talk about uh, logging and uh, how it's gonna affect Clackamas County. And let's see, one more thing. Uh, you heard a very impassioned talk this evening about tolling. If you haven't looked at the potential impact of tolling on your pocketbook, it could be very much greater than uh, even a 4.5 cola. So please get involved. If you go to um, votebeforetolls.org, and look at the IP4 and see if you can't maybe get involved in taking care of that. So again, you know, Clackamas County, we have all kinds of challenges here, but one thing I think is true. Uh, when you consider about where you might wanna go that might be more conducive to raising a family and just enjoying life, I think it's hard to beat Clackamas County. So we'll continue to do what we can to keep everybody happy. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Commissioner Schrader, you're up. Well, let me start by thanking everyone for coming tonight. Um, you know, we always like to hear from uh, people in our community and particularly the folks that, uh, as you say, we always give uh, Wes kudos. It is one of my favorite departments because of all the work you do to keep uh, our water clean. And uh, we do appreciate that. So let me just thank you for that. Um, one of the things I wanted to uh, talk about uh, today is a few of the events that are going on this weekend. Uh, it's the first city celebration is going to be uh, here in Oregon City on Saturday. I'm going to plan on going there and joining some of the fun as well. Uh, there will be a pride parade in Portland, and I do hope to uh, join some of my uh, some of my fellow uh, workers, you know, uh, as I go there, I'm going to go and uh, take a take a stroll in a parade, and um, looking forward to that. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things I have been working on, and one of the key legacy projects I've been taking a close look at is child care access, and it reminded me because we have a little youngin in the back there. I think he's still here, isn't he? Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that we're finding out with our workforce is that childcare access is becoming a bigger and bigger issue for people. It's not, sometimes it's not af affordable, there aren't enough slots, uh, and many areas of our county are considered to be a childcare desert. So I've been working with our early learning hub and our workforce board, our local Clackmas workforce board, Clackmas workforce partnership is also very interested in this issue. And we are hopefully going to keep our fingers crossed and come forward with legislation to see if we can probably close that gap between people needing access to child care, getting child care so they can go back to work and be prosperous. So there'll be a lot more details on that. I also had a great time working with uh, Commissioner West this afternoon because uh, we're going to go and look at some recovery centers. Um, and you're going to talk more about that, Commissioner. I know you will be. Uh, and that's, again, how do we help people? People move out of addiction and what is the county's role in that and we're going to look at some models across the United States uh, to see what other places are doing and Ben you're going to take that over for me uh, final finally I wanted to uh, let you know that I am chair of the community economic and workforce development 
uh, committee at the National Association of Counties. I'm the chair of that committee. So this past week we met virtually and we have pulled together all of our resolutions and for that particular committee, we used our resolutions to lobby Congress to make sure that we have a vital, uh, well-trained workforce and also that our businesses remain vital and healthy as well. So uh, we'll, we'll be, heading out, be heading out there to, uh, to Texas, which is, I hear is pretty hot right now. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm looking forward to the heat in Texas. Uh, and finally, one of the things I just want to mention is that um, farmers markets are in full swing. So if you get a chance this weekend, they're all, we've got them in Canby, Estacada, Milwaukee, Lake Oswego, Malala, where else? We've got actually Clackamas County has the largest number of farmers mar markets in the state. We are an, a, a small farm county. And so I hope all of you get a chance to go out and enjoy those farmers markets. Oh, and one last thing. Last night I had visitors from Fujian province in China. I'm a member of the Oregon China Council and I was able to host uh, these visit visitors on a people to people basis where they uh, visit us and occasionally we get to visit them. So it's kind of um, neighbor to neighbor diplomacy, let's put it that way. And we had a great time with them and they appreciated uh, the hospitality that our council was able to pull together with a great salmon baked dinner. So. That's it for me. Thank you. thank you. Commissioner West, you're up. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, you know, we uh, thank you to everybody that's here today. Um, engaging in the process is important. And so I super appreciate everyone that did that. It's much, I, it's almost always better to, to be in front of a packed room than it is an empty room. So thank you for um, sharing your concerns, your thoughts, your support, or whatever tonight with us. And we'll take all of that into consideration. Um, I had a great 4th of July break. Um, I spent a lot of time with my husband and our son, and we had the ability to um, use our new trailer, and it was a wonderful time to kind of um, recharge, but this week has been a blur, uh, coming back from a break after the 4th of July um, holiday. And just a couple things. Um, I'm gonna start with just thanking Paul, I think he might have left, Paul Edgar, for your constant advocacy. Um, on the tolling issue. Uh, I have said many times, I think tolling the way it's being proposed by, proposed by ODOT is, um, and the legislature is the largest threat this county has seen in a generation. Um, some estimates say that $160 per car per household. So how many cars do you have in your household? $160 a month times it by the number of cars. It is a big threat to the livability of our community. The, one of the cool things tonight is, is I didn't see anybody not want to stand up against tolling in this room. So I hope you guys take the same energy and help us fight against that. Um, the pause and a lot of the movement we've had with this, it happened because of the leadership of Clackamas County and the 16 cities in this county working together in unison against a common threat. Um, and I really appreciate that effort. Um, ODOT's been really difficult to deal with and we're gonna continue to try to collaborate to get the best outcomes we can for Clackamas County. Um, but, but tolling, he, he wasn't just hyperbole when he was up here angry talking to us about tolling, it's a big deal. Um, I, Commissioner um, Schrader and I are working on a number of things together uh, and we had an update today on our blue ribbon um, panel that many of you might may have heard about. It's, gonna, it's, a, it's a panel of expert stakeholders. It's kind of a summit on, on how to address and do better on addiction, homelessness, and mental health issues. I'm really impressed what's coming in September. I hope all of you clue in and watch what happens. Um, it was, it was, our staff is, is killing it. They're doing a great job helping to put this summit together. The, 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 the quality of it, I think, is gonna show a lot of leadership within the state and the region. I think we're gonna get a lot of specific outcomes about how we can do better with the recovery-oriented system of care. Um, also, I had the opportunity, I know I wasn't the only commissioner because Senator Meeks here in Clackamas County um, out of the Oregon legislature had a couple of these meetings. I went to one of them. I specifically asked him about tolling. He was the, the guy who sponsored Senate Bill 933. That was to try to help us figure out how we could slow this down, get local communities involved. Um, and out of that came a subcommittee, long story short, came a subcommittee to help address this issue with diversion and all these things that came out of Clackamas County's um, response to the environmental assessment. We want to 
ensure that cities and local governments have a strong voice at this table in the subcommittee so that we can make sure we're advocating and um, for the needs of the county. Um, I think we need to also continue to push for the EIS. I asked him about um, why the state continues to advocate its role in mental health addiction services. We continue to lag the rest of the nation. Um, we continue to have a persistent crisis um, and often the local governments are stuck with dealing with these tough problems and we need them to step up and fund capital investments and things like that for um, recovery centers, detox centers, things like that to get people stabilized, clean, sober, healthy, and whole. Um, and then we, I, I thanked him for helping us get the $30 million for our courthouse. Um, he assured me that he has a plan, even in the short session, to help get the rest of that commitment from the state. Um, so he spoke to the courthouse funding and getting the additional $30 million. So I appreciate Senator Meek's constant advocacy for that funding. He has been fantastic on that issue. Um, and he's probably not watching, but thank you, Senator Meeks. Um, and uh, I was at this wonderful dinner at Martha's house with the Chinese delegation. Um, what stood out to me is that she, uh, she, 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 she related your heritage with their heritage yeah. with your family. She showed an old photo of your, your grandmother on your mother's side, your aunties, and how that informed you, and they, tra they were translating, and how you related your Italian culture with their culture, and it was a really wonderful moment of fellowship and breaking bread and having a good time. It always is, and by the way, Martha is a fabulous cook, so if you ever get the opportunity to have any meal at her house, you will be um, treated fantastically. You're a fantastic host, That's my colleague. Um, and then next week, I'm excited because I am traveling with you. Yep. We're going to Texas. Uh, we're going to deal with a lot of recovery um, issues um, focused on these centers that are world class that are just doing amazing work in Austin um, and in San Antonio. We're going to tour these centers or meeting with their county officials to learn from them. And we want to take these best practices here. I, I can say this. I won't get into too many details. The stuff that we are trying to envision and to seed here in Clackamas County is just exciting and not being done um, in this region um, that much. And so we're trying to be visionary in this and we're looking to other places to learn. And so I'm looking forward to traveling with you, Martha, and bringing those best practices back. And then, uh, we're, and, and, and I swear to you, I am Commissioner West. I know you're usually used to me having more feathers on my face or, or some facial hair, but um, I am doing my first Navy drill um, this weekend. Wow. So um, they, they weren't very accepting of my beard. So this is, this is my new look, I guess. So thank you guys, and it has been a great week. Yeah. Thank you very much. Commissioner Savas, you're up. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, Chair. I appreciate everyone being here tonight for virtually every issue that came up here tonight. Um, as an, someone who's been an employer most of my life, um, I can say that trying to have a good, strong workforce means a lot of things. It, it ta it's very, very hard, especially now. I, I kind of, in a way, we are employers uh, today, even still, even though I'm not a private employer. But it always was a challenge to keep a good workforce under, for a, a number of reasons. So, um, you know, it's not just words that you're appreciated, but retaining a good workforce is a challenge for a lot of different reasons. So I appreciate you all. Uh, the other topic that came up here is coming up here a lot. I'm looking forward to, is there a date yet for that discussion on diversity? The first. The first, August 1st? August 1st. Okay. Um, I, I really have had a lot of people reach out to me. Um, I appreciate that. I would encourage everyone to, um, really look into, um, step aside from your own thoughts and just look into um, the realities that other people have experienced, um, the bullying, um, the people that have been mistreated, um, people who felt they didn't belong, uh, they didn't speak the right language, they can't speak English, um, people that are disabled that can't cross the street safely because they don't, that that there's not a safe way to pass the street. There are a lot of injustices. And I want to just break down those words and just more plant the seeds that I think each of us should all do, and I'm talking to my colleagues here, and that is to think about each of those letters, diversity, D, and what it means, inclusion, and what that means, and equity, and what that means and how it should be applied. Um, they all mean different things, but 
they, it's all important that as they tie together in what our policies are crafted to do, make sure that people feel as though they belong and also realize that we are stronger um, when, with, a diverse, with a diverse workforce and diverse community. This country is proof of that. We, this country is, is, is made itself based on diversity. We have to realize that. But if you don't feel included, and you don't feel you belong, um, gosh, it's hard to go to work. It's hard to be in your community. It's hard to be a neighbor. And I experienced that. You know, I, 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 someone came up here and talked about being a, a third, their family being a, a th three generations away from being an immigrant. My, all four of my grandparents were immigrants. They came here as refugees from a mass genocide in Turkey. Um, and uh, they came here, could barely speak English or didn't speak any English at all, and they were, they, were, they were not treated well. And even when I grew up, I saw that firsthand, whether it was whether what they wore, how they sounded, mm -hmm. the color of their skin, all of the above. So I, I lived it. I can just tell you that I think not, it's hard to describe what it's like to be an employer unless you become an employer. It's hard to understand what it's like to live in a family when you're discriminated against unless you've lived in a family and you've been discriminated against. You don't understand until you live it. For those who don't have those experiences, I can't, I can't speak to people that had cancer. I don't know what it's like to be a cancer survivor. I have no idea. I can, I can sympathize, but I just, we have to realize that their life experiences are real and we have to value that. Um, So the other thing I want to talk about was tolling. <laughs> Part of my life now is tolling. Um, I, the, and I also want to talk about inflation because we're really tied to, to we, I see this as being really being tied together. And I really appreciate Mr. Edgar. Mr. Edgar was also at the town hall last night that I attended with uh, Senator Meek with regard to all the topics that came up. Tolling was certainly one of them. But, you know, we have since COVID have experienced about, I think, a 25% loss in our buying power. When someone here spoke about going to the store buying groceries. Hey, that's, that's absolutely real. Almost everything is so darn expensive, <clears throat> whether it's a gallon of gasoline, whether it's a, you know, a gallon of paint or groceries in your house, whatever it may be, everything's just gone up. It's ridiculous. And I'm hoping that there's deflation. I'm hoping that those prices come back down. But if they don't, there, there's a hardship because we all lost 25% of our buying power. Uh, our, our life savings, whatever that may be, for those who have some savings, that got diminished 25% because of our buying power is down. I hope we gain that back. It's too, might be too soon to tell, but I hope that it gets more competitive at some time. But also what's magnifying this tolling issue that wasn't before us two years ago was the cost of construction has gone up through the roof. So the projects that were on the books to be funded uh, with tolling have doubled in price. Um, I think that it was 470 million was a price to do the Abernathy Bridge and the lanes. Today, that's about 1.2 billion. It's more than doubled. And price of gasoline's gone up significantly as well. How we overcome these economic challenges, I, I, I really don't, I don't know. I don't know how we do it, but I think, I'm hoping that ODOT sits back and thinks about all the personal experiences we're all going to have, everyone in this room, I don't think anyone in this room is going to be exempt from a toll, right? That impact, I think the $160 per household, I think that's a modest estimate. Per it's, car. Going to, it's going to be more. Car. It's, going to, it's going to be more. And they already know that they can't collect enough money. So as I heard today in one of my conversations with ODOT, it's probably going to be more. It's probably going to be a higher toll. So hold on to your hats, folks, because we're in for a ride. The other thing I want to convey to Mr. Edgar, that he may not know, and I think one of my commissioner's colleagues spoke to that, is that we all are united. The cities are, the cities and the counties are all working together, and not just Clackamas, but other cities and counties um, in, in the region are all working together. We're not screaming, we're not setting our hair on fire, uh, we're keeping our composure, but we're trying to work through this problem, and we just hope that the legislature listens, and I want to get back to that. That is where the decisions are made, if whether it's the cost of living, or all the things that go along with it, the legislature has some impact on this tolling project. Um, and it's gonna, again, it's gonna affect everyone in this room. So if you can do anything, advocate for anything, advocate and find out why, why we were denied process. Oregon is known for its transparency. Oregon is known for public process. And, and they shut us out. 
the, the Transportation Committee shut us out of having any hearings. We waited through COVID with the Capitol locked down. We waited for this opportunity, this legislative session to have a voice and we were denied that voice. That's totally unfair and especially when it, again, economically how it impacts every family in this region. So I, I, I'm not gonna belabor this much more other than to say that it's time for all of us to jump up and down and scream, I guess, and I don't know when the day is that we go to the Capitol um, and, and make our case because we, I don't think we, we don't, time's running out. This pause is uh, a, not a pause, it's only a pause on collection. ODOT, and you heard it from Mr. Edgar, the legislature gave them the money to go full speed ahead on this tolling program and that's exactly what they're doing. They are, they, their foot is on the gas, this program is moving forward unless we can find a way to make it more, more fair uh, or get an express lane model or something where people have a choice and have options that they don't have to pay a toll to get back and forth to work. Lot said, Chair, I, I uh, thank you for indulging me. As always, I yield my time. <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you all for coming here tonight. We do value your, your opinion. You could have been home in this lovely summer evening with your families, but you chose to be with your wonderful county commissioners. Thank you for that. I had some good news come in just recently. The governor has signed Senate Bill 1013. You don't know what that is, but that's a bill that came to me from a lady last fall. Her sister had lost her husband. He had died tragically. And she used all the family savings to make the payments on her house. She lost her house and had two kids, and she was going to be out in the street. Her sister says, come live at my house. I live in the country. I have a place where you can park your motorhome. And she says, okay, fine. She lived there for a while. A neighbor got a little nosy, got his nose out of joint, and um, reported them to the county codes because evidently in county code you cannot park your motorhome for more than a week or so. And I says, well, I'm going to go down to our department and fix it. Come to find out it was a state land use law. So at the good heartness of Cedric, Senator Cedric Hayden, he dropped that bill for me, allowing, it's permissive, there's no have-tos in it at all. Any county who wants to establish a way for people to park one motorhome on their property for a family of their choice to live there until they get back up on their feet again. And that's going to save really untold dollars in uh, economic disparity. It's going to save a lot of money. It does not apply to cities. It's just unincorporated counties that can do this. Not all counties can choose to do it or not do it, but I'm very happy with that. Um, I knew the governor was going to sign it because I called her a couple weeks ago and I said, hey, governor, there's this little bill. Will you sign it? And she says, well, let me figure out what that is. She drew up on her computer and says, oh, yeah. And I says, it's, it's permissive. She says, well, yeah, counties don't like mandates, is what the governor told me. <laughs> and, right. and I've been saying that for how many years? The governor, and I says, that's right, <clears throat> Madam Governor. And I'd like to talk to you about our courthouse. Um, oh, yeah. I says, I'm hoping that you'll sign the funding bill for the courthouse because I heard that you might veto some of the funding bills. Please don't veto our courthouse. And she says, wait a minute. You wanted, you needed $61 million, and they only gave you $30 million. She says, that's not right. That legislature needs to fund the entire amount of money. And by the way, Multnomah County came back and asked three times because they had cost overruns. And she says, you're going to do it too, and this is what you're going to do. So Governor Kotek laid out a little plan for me. And commissioners, we'll have a stab at it next Tuesday, and we're all going to support that plan. And I'm sure the legislature is going to keep their promise. And why this is important? Because years ago, the Oregon Justice Department realized counties were not building courthouses. It's, a, it's a, a constitutional that counties have courthouse. We couldn't afford it. So they said, we'll create a 50% match for counties. Well, if you don't keep your promise for Clackamas County, what other counties who are in the, in the queue to build their courthouses are going to extend themselves and build the courthouse when they know the legislature can pull their funding away from them? Lane County is up next. Benton County is having a terrible time with theirs. And there's a whole list of courthouses, and so it sent a chilling effect across the state of Oregon. And this wonderful courthouse that's being built over here with union labor, by the way, little bacon uh, wages, okay, that may be 
one of the last courthouses like it built in the entire state of Oregon. And that's something we can be very proud of, and we did not raise taxes on our citizenry to do that. We had some good uh, zoning amendment changes, and people say, oh my gosh, zoning, that's so blah, 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 blah. Well, if you live in an area where you have land, decades and dec decades ago, Clackamas County had this really funny rule. They took away, they diminished your lot of record. So if I had five acres here, on a deed, and I had another five acres here on a deed. Well, they set up the same ownership. We're going to combine it together, and you can't build two houses on it. Again, that creates you know another housing shortage, shortage, and increase the price of uh, building. So what we have done today is, since that restriction was more restrictive than state, we rolled that back, and now lots of record. In, in the same ownership will now be honored. Thank you very much for that, and that was uh, a big deal. We did some other zoning efforts. Also, we're allowing restrooms to be built in tourist zones. We actually have tourism zones in Clackamas County, and you may be familiar with Government Camp, Rhododendron, and Weemi up Mount Hood for some of those areas. We did a lot of good work. I would support all of you to sign the petition, IP4. This board is going to have a discussion on tolling soon. Uh, Tuesday? Not, not, not Tuesday. Yet. Yeah. Anyway, and I, um, we need to get going with that. And Mr. Edgar was right when he came. And we internally are fighting this really, really hard. And we're not doing nothing about it. And we have spent some money on an outside a legal firm, I'll say, uh, to help us along the way. There's a lot of exciting things happening at Clackamas County. I see no further business before this commission. We are adjourned. And thank you.